فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم انهم يرون انهم يامرون اهل السنه والجماعه they command انهم يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر they command good they enjoy the good وينهون عن المنكر and they prevent and prohibit the evil with what lakin bil ilmi with knowledge warifqi and with tenderness they're gentle in the way they do it was sabri and they do it with what with patience biqasd al islah with the intention on rectifying the situation they don't want to belittle anyone they don't want to ridicule anybody their goal is that things are rectified but the way they do it is with knowledge they have ilm they're not talking with jahl they have rifq the way that they do it is with what gentleness they also are doing it with patience that they endure patience they get insulted they get name called they get questioned they get belittled ma'a dhalika they show patience because allah said in the quran wal yakum minkum umma let there be let there be amongst you a umma yad'una ila al khayr that call to the good wa yanhauna wa yanhauna 'an al munkari and they prevent and prohibit the evil wal yakun wal takun minkum ummatun let there be from amongst you a umma a people yad'una ila al khayr they call to the good ama ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhauna 'an al munkar they call to the good and they prohibit the evil abu abi sa'id al khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man whoever whoever man ra'a minkum munkaran anyone from amongst you who sees a munkar fal yughayyirhu bi yadi stop it with your hand fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisani if you're not able then stop it with your tongue fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbih and if you're not able then stop it with your heart wa dhalika adhaf al iman so this hadith tells us stopping it with your hand are you unable to change it with your hand then use your tongue are you unable to change it with your tongue then hate it in your heart then that is the weakest of iman this hadith is talking to everybody who sees evil everybody who sees who sees evil that they stop it in one way or, or another whether it be by their hand and that is in accordance to ability when you're trying to stop it with your hand there should not come from it a greater problem if when you're stopping it with your hand it's going to lead to a greater evil then you're not allowed to do it then speak about it if you speak and you think there's going to come from it a greater evil then don't speak about it and the third one is that you have to hate it in your heart and that is the weakest of al iman the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us in a hadith al imam ahmad narrated in his musnad min hadith abi bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the prophet said inna nasa idha ra'aw al munkar the prophet said that if the people see evil wa lam yughayyiruh and they don't change it aw shaka an ya'ummahum allah bi iqabih if the people see an evil and they don't stop it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's going to bring that evil onto every one of them if the people see an mubtadi' doing bid'ah or they see a person doing sins what they need to do is they stop that evil they speak against it and if they don't that punishment of allah that's coming down it will encompass everybody so as long as there's a group of people who are warning against innovation and innovators both inshallah ta'ala the fitna the, the punishment that's going to come is not going to encompass us also all inshallah and it is from ignorance to say to the people don't warn against the innovators or don't warn against innovation because that person who's telling you not to warn against innovation and innovators is basically saying to you let the let the punishment of allah come and encompass us all and that is what that is jahalat it's not jahal jahalat many ignorance it's a compounded ignorance but the way that the person should stop that evil my beloved brothers and sisters is bil rifq with tenderness and gentleness abdullah ibn muwaffal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said إن الله تعالى رفيق الله is gentle يحب الرفق الله love gentleness ويعطي عليه ما لا يعطي على العنف and Allah gives a person a lot in 
Gentleness, that which he doesn't give to the one who's harsh and tough. Abu Dawood narrated this. So that the person should show gentleness in the way that they call. Wallahi, you have to understand that the person that you're talking to is not worse than Fir'aun. And you're not better than Nabi Musa. And Allah said to Nabi Allah Musa, what did he say to him? Allah said to Musa, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَرَ وَيَخْشَى Musa, Musa, when you're speaking to Fir'aun, a man who said, I am Ilah, speak to him in a very gentle way. This is Nabi Allah Musa and Harun. So you're not better than Musa and Harun. And the person that you're talking to is not worse than Fir'aun. Is not worse than Fir'aun. So when you speak to that individual, be gentle in your speech. As the Prophet told us, وَيُعْطِي عَلَيْهِ مَا لَا يُعْطِي عَلَى الْعُنْفِ Allah is going to give you through your gentleness that which He won't give, it, give to you if you're harsh and tough. And a group of people because of their ignorance and their jahal of the deen. And them not having بِقَصْدِ islah, They truly don't want to rectify the situation. They only choose the harshest of ways and manners. They choose the most toughest and the most roughest manner in rectifying a situation. The reason they do that is because they don't have qasd al-islah. They don't really want to change anything. They just want to belittle the person. They just want to ridicule the person. And as we said, the person that you're talking to is not worse than Fir'aun. And Allah told us to speak to Fir'aun in what? With good. In a very what? In a soft manner. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said a very powerful qa'ida. He said, فَيُقْتَنَعُ بِالْخَيْرِ الْيَسِيرِ إِذَا لَمْ يَحْصُلِ الْكَثِيرِ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, We become content with little good if we're unable to attain the great good. And we repel the great evil even if we have to stay in little evil. We will repel the greater evil, even if it entails and it leads us to staying in a small evil. Because he says, Allah sent the messengers. Wallahu ta'ala ba'atha rusula bi tahsilil masalihi wa takmiliha. Because Allah sent the messengers with what? Bringing about good and completing it. Wa ta'atilil mafasidi wa taqliliha. And repelling evil or lessening it. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'a al khalqa, and the Prophet ﷺ, he called the creation bighayatil imkan according to the greatest of his ability. Pay attention. We will be content with small good if we're unable to attain the great good. And we'll also repel the great harm if that entails that we will live and dwell inside the lesser harm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent the Prophet with what? With, with what? بِتَحْصِيلِ الْمَصَالِحِ وَتَكْمِيلِهَا وَدَرْئِ الْمَفَاسِدِ وَتَقْلِيلِهَا Which is a qa'id of qawaid min qawaid al-fiqiyya. We bring about good. And if we can complete it, we want to complete it. But if we can't, we'll take the minimum then. And we will repel the greater evil. We will repel it in its totality. And if we can't, then we will lessen it at least. We will lessen it at least. So that's what we need to always remember. That is what we always need to remember when we're trying to call others. تحصيل المصالح وتكميلها ودرء المفاسد وتقليلها. Some people they don't care what they're doing, and it brings about more chaos and more catastrophe. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make us those who are those who have they give their da'wah and amr bil ma'roof and nahi an al munkar with ilm and rif and they come with patience. And they make sure that they have the intention of al islah rectification of the situation and bringing about some good. Al qaida al thamina ashara. The eighteenth qaida is wa yadguna kull man tasadda lil amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar ila ila atibar al masalih wal mafasid bi mizan al sharia. وَيَدْعُونَ They call أهل السنة Everybody أهل السنة والجماعة They call everybody who's doing أمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر Anyone who's calling to good 
and anyone who's prohibiting evil, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah come to these people and they tell them to observe the masalih, the good, and the evil, but all of that in accordance to the Sharia. Ah. Are you with me? Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when it comes to Al-Murr bil Ma'roof and Na'il Munkar, they are the ones who observe Al Masalih al Mafasid and they make others also do the same. They make the people who are giving da'wah observe the Masalih and the Mafasid. Sisters and brothers, I want you to understand this point. When you're looking at the Masalih and the Mafasid, bi mizani ish, do you look at it? With, 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 with what scale? Bi mizani shara. Some people today they will say to you, Akhi, it's not Maslaha for us to speak about this issue. And what Maslaha is he talking about? He's not so talking about maslaha shari'a. He's talking about maslaha shakhsiya. Him and his organization, that's what he's talking about. And he makes it a deen related maslaha. He makes it look like a mafsada that's coming to the religion when it's not. Sah? So when we look at the masalih and the mafasid and we're observing it, we observe it in accordance to the sharia. Not in accordance to your group and your personal needs. That's not where we look at. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Walidalik Allah said in the Quran, Wala tasubbu ladina yad'una min duni lahi, fa yasubbu Allah adwan bi ghayri ilm, kadalika zayyanna li kulli ummatin amalahum, thumma ila rabbihim marji'uhum, fa yunabbi'uhum bima kanu, bima kanu ya'maloon. Allah says, Wala tasubbu ladina yad'una min duni lah. Do not insult those who call besides Allah. Don't insult them. Don't insult the disbelievers. Why? Then they are going to go and insult Allah. A greater problem is going to come from it. Why is it a greater problem? Because their idols are not gods. So if you do insult their idols, which is not a god, it's not a bigger problem. It's not a big problem. But they're going to really, they're really going to insult a real god, the only and only one, the only and one god, which is a greater problem. So we're told to not insult their gods, because if we do, they're going to insult Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that is observing the what. The masalih and the mafasid bi mizan shara. This is going to bring a religious problem. So stay away from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا Allah said, nothing stopped us. Nothing stopped us. And nursila bil ayati That we send signs with the messengers إِلَّا أَنْ كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ Except that the early generations disbelieved. In other words, other prophets would come with what? Nabi Allah said, Allah said, وَآتَيْنَا ثَمُودَ النَّاقَةَ مُبَصِرَةً فَظَلَمُوا بِهَا وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَقْوِيفًا Pay attention. Nabi Allah, the people of Thamud, huh? the people of Thamud, Allah, what did He give them? A naqa, right? Allah gave them a naqa, a she camel. What did they do? They cut the, 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 the foot, or what's it called here? Huh? What's this part of the leg called? The Achilles. Achilles? I, uh, that, that reminds me of something, I don't want to say it. He cut it, they cut that off from him. When they cut it, he died. What did Allah do? He destroyed them. And they disbelieved in the Prophets. They mocked the Prophets. They were laughing at the animals and everything. And whatever, when the Prophets came with the signs, they weren't taking it. So Allah says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ وَآتَيْنَا ثَمُودَ النَّاقَةَ مُبْصِرَةً فَظَلَمُوا بِهَا وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا Now when we send signs, we're sending it to punish him. So Allah is saying the reason why we stop doing that is because it's going to lead to a bigger problem. Because once we bring those signs, if they don't believe, it's going to be an overall punishment. The whole nation has to be destroyed if they don't believe. Are you with me brothers? But that's a big problem. So the sign is not given to them now. The Sharia observes those things. And the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, he said to her, لَوْلَا أَنَّ قَوْمَكَ حَدِيثُ عَهْدِ بِجَاهِلِيَّةٍ لَأَنْفَقْتُ كَنْزَ الْكَعْبَةِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَجَعَلْتُ بَابَهَا بِالْأَرْضِ وَلَأَدْخَلْتُ فِيهَا مِنَ الْحِجْرِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said to Aisha, if your people were not new into Islam, they just entered into Islam. لَهَدَمْتُ الْكَعْبَةَ وَلَبَنَيْتُ عَلَىٰ أَسَاسِ إِبْرَاهِمِ I would have destroyed the Kaaba and I would have built it according to how Nabi Ibrahim did it. I would have changed the... Because look at the Kaaba today. How's the Kaaba? 
Is it like this, the way Ibrahim is? Why? Because there's a part of the Kaaba that's still, you know that part we're not allowed to pray in the Salah time. Have you seen it? It's, it's built like this. It's like a horseshoe. Have you seen that part? That's actually meant to be part of the Kaaba. You know that, right? Are you with me? That's meant to be part of the? It's actually meant to be part of the Kaaba. But the Prophet said, Aisha, if I now tamper with that, the people are going to be like, look at what Muhammad is doing, and it's going to cause a bigger problem. So the Prophet left it. Sah? Till today, it's still the same. It got changed in, in one time in Islamic history, and then it got destroyed back to, to how it was again. Also, when the Munafiqeen, the story of the Munafiqeen, the Prophet Sallallahu what did they say to him? Are you not going to kill these Munafiqeen? And what did he say? لا يتحدث الناس. I don't want the people to talk about أن محمد يقتل أصحابه. If the Prophet kills the Munafiqeen, what's going to happen? The people are going to be like, oh, look at Muhammad. He kills everybody. Now he's turned towards his own followers. He's killing his own followers. That's what they're going to say, right? They're not going to look at these followers as hypocrites and infiltrators, right? They're going to look at them as your own followers, man. You're killing your own people, man. They follow you. They pray with you. How are you killing them? That's the perception of the people. The Prophet took the people's perception into, into consideration. And that's why sometimes you find a brother who just got married, he's, new, he's newly married, he hasn't really announced his marriage to everybody yet, he hasn't made it that public, and then he, he's walking around with a, with a woman holding her hand. What's that going to make the people say? The guy has become bad, what's happened to him? He's got a girlfriend, a brother. That's what they're going to say, right? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa when he walked out of the masjid and then the two companions, they walked fast. The Prophet said to the companions, Ala rislikuma, walk slow, walk slow. This is my wife. Inna Safiya bin Tuhuyay. This is my wife, Safiya. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we didn't ever think anything bad of you. He said, Inna shaytan yajri min ibn Adam in majr al-dam. Shaytan runs in the person like the blood runs in the veins. So what the Prophet ﷺ was teaching them was that, this is my wife. And scholars, they take from this, that whenever something happens to you, say, clarify it. Don't let people be boggled. If you see somebody looking at you in an awkward way, tell them your situation. Tah? Are you with me, brothers? Don't let people think, to your, think, think bad of you and let them still stay in that bad thoughts of you. So, this qa'id is important, which is, اعتبار المصالح والمفاسد Observing the masalih and the mafasid بميزان الشرع The khawarij and ISIS and groups like that, what do they say? They say masalih and mafasid is what? It's a taagut. That's what they say. They call it a taagut. Ah. So they don't want to observe. Do they want to observe masalih and mafasid? No. So they call everything that they don't like, they call it a taagut. Masalih and mafasid is not a taagut. The deen of Allah, it's a religion of Allah. Number 19. Number 19. And now, يَعْتَقِدُونَ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ believe أَنَّ الْجِهَادَ فَرِيضَةً Jihad is obligatory. Ahlul Sunnah believe this. مَا ضِيَةٌ And it will carry on إلى قيام الساعة until the Day of Judgment. أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ believe jihad. And they believe that the jihad will carry on until the Day of Judgment. صح? Are you with me brothers? Does that make sense? أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ believe that. And they believe it's going to carry on until the day of judgment. And Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe jihad happens through what? Bil qalbi in the heart. Wa bil da'wat, it happens through da'wah. It happens through establishing proofs, bringing, bringing uh, arguments. Okay, it comes through physically fighting against the munafiqeen and the kuffar. Also by money, jihad happens. All of those Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe there are forms of jihad. They're not apologetic about it. They don't rub out jihad from their religion. They believe it exists. They believe jihad first of all starts with, with the tongue and establishing the proof first. And that's where it starts from. And it happens with the sword, with conditions that they stipulate. Conditions. The first condition that they mention is that أَنْ يَكُونَ الْقَصْدُ مِنْهُ وَالدَّافِعِ لَهُ إِعْلَاءِ كَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ That the purpose, the main and the, obje the objective of why they are fighting in the cause of Allah is what? For Allah's word to be high. 
as the hadith narrated, man, tak, man qatala anyone who fight, li takuna kalimatullahi hiya al-ulya fahuwa fi sabilillah. Anyone who fights for the word of Allah to be high, then that person is fighting for what? He's a mujahid. He's the one who's fighting for the cause of Allah. So that's the first condition. The second condition is, the second condition is ظهور العلم النافع والعمل الصالح بين الناس Jihad happens when beneficial knowledge and righteous actions is apparent in the Muslims. That the Muslims are educated. That they have beneficial knowledge. And they, are, they have righteous actions with them. You don't take ignorant people to the battlefield. Who don't have no knowledge and have no implementation. He's not going to pray. Why else he's fighting? He's not even praying salah. Allah says in the Quran, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله How is the religion going to prevail first? How? ليظهره على الدين كله For it to prevail over everything. First of all, it has to prevail by beneficial knowledge and righteous actions as the ayah says in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 33. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبُخَارِيُّ chapter a bab in الصحيح and what did he say? بَابٌ chapter عَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ a, a, a righteous action is قَبْلَ الْقِتَالِ before fighting. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ الدَّرْدَاءِ أَبُوْ الدَّرْدَاءِ said إِنَّمَا تُقَاتِلُونَ بِأَعْمَالِكُمْ Abu Darda said, you are fighting with your righteous actions. You don't fight with your swords. Are you with me? Lidalik Allah said to the believers in the Quran, Ya ayya alladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon kabura maqtan inda Allah an taquluna ma la taf'aloon inna Allah yuhibbu alladhina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan ka'annahu bunyanu marsus. But before that, what did he mention? Why are you not implementing what you, don't, what you know? Why are you not coming with righteous actions? Then after that, Allah says, Allah loves those who fight in the cause of Allah. So fighting comes after you implement the knowledge that you know. The third is al-i'dad al-askari. The person has to be ready, military-wise. The Muslims don't fight with rocks against a tank. It's a joke. It doesn't happen anywhere. They have to be physically ready, military ready. If not, then there's a condition missing. And if there's a condition missing for prayer, can you pray the salah? No, nah, so these are prerequisites. They have to be in place, or else it doesn't exist. And Allah told us to get ready. What did He say? وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْرِ تُلْهِدْبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَكُمْ So we were told to prepare physically, military-wise. So the believers have to be like that. The fourth condition is, Ijtima'il Muslimin, the Muslims have to unite ala imam in yaquduhum. There has to be a Muslim leader. There has to be a what? There has to be a Muslim leader who is running the battle. There's no fawda. It can't be all over the place. Are you with me, brothers? There has to be a leader running at the pro project, the program. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Alam tara ila al-mala'i min bani Israel min ba'di Musa إذ قالوا لنبي الله مبعث لنا ملكا نقاتل في سبيل الله قال هل عسيتم إن كتب عليكم القتال ألا تقاتلوا قالوا وما لنا ألا نقاتل في سبيل الله وقد أخرجنا من ديارنا وابنائنا فلما كتب عليهم القتال تولوا إلا قليلا منهم والله عليم بالظالمين so this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Alam tara She thinks she wants to read Quran. That's the benefits of children spending time in the masjid. Sah? If they don't get any other chance, but just run around the masjid, these are the things they pick up. Now, Allah says, Alam tara ila ladhi, alam tara ila al malai. Do you not see the group of people? Min bani Israela, from the people of bani Israela. Min ba'di Musa, after Nabi Allah Musa. Id qalu li nabiyin wa nais, id qalu wa nais, was said to li nabiyin a prophet. Lahum of theirs, ib'at lana malikan. Place for us a king. Nuqatil fi sabi'illah, so we can fight in the cause of Allah. So we need a king, a person in charge of our fight, so we can fight under. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the, sorry, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, Imam al-Bukhari narrated in the hadith of Abi Hurairah, Al-Imam Jannah, that the Imam is a shield. Yuqatalu min warahi wa yuttaqa bih. The Imam is a Jannah, he's a shield. You fight behind him. So without an Imam, there's no shield for the Muslims. 
all of those are all of those are as for jihad daf'i whereas that the muslims have to defend their lives then this mas'ala it differs fa inna hukmahu yakhtalif its ruling differs and it differs in accordance to the situation though and masalih and mafasid and matters pertaining to that are looked at my beloved brothers and sisters will never like isa fight ya jud wa majud ya jud wa majud is isa ibn maryam going to fight them when he comes the day of judgment the akhir zaman isa is he going to fight them what is he going to do he's going to go into a why why is he going to go to a mountain he's unable to fight he hasn't got the ability so if the muslims don't have the ability to fight they don't fight Somebody will say to you, "Akhi, look at you guys. You're against jihad fi sabilillah. That's what you're against." It's like somebody saying to you, "It's not salah time," and you say you hate the salah. Sah? That's the summary of it. It's like saying to somebody, "It's not salah time. The salah time hasn't entered," and you say, "Akhi, wallah, you hate duhur. Wallah, you hate asr and maghrib and isha. That's what it is. That's the irony of it." Al qaida al ashroon, the twentieth qaida, and the final qaida, inshallah, of today. Is ويؤمنون بما دل عليه القرآن ومن سنة الله الكونية القدرية في قول الله تعالى إن يمسسكم قرح فقد مس القوم قرح مثله وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين they believe that which the Quran shows and the Sunnah. They believe in the universal science and they believe in the predestinies that Allah has set. Ahlul Sunnah believe that. We believe Ahlul Sunnah that maybe today we're not the upper hand as Muslims. Maybe the enemies of Islam are stronger than us today. Maybe they got the upper hand. But what we believe is if pain has touched us today, the enemies, pain has touched them once before. And the days will be turned and swapped between the groups. One day you've got the upper hand, and one day they've got the upper hand. And Allah knows those of you who believe. And the reason why Allah is making you guys lose, O Muslims, sometimes is to bring out of you guys martyrs. وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاءٌ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah don't like, does not like the transgressors. Allah does not like the transgressors. And the context of that verse is in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 139 to Ayah 144. Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ وَيَعْلَمَ الصَّابِرِينَ وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تَلْقَوْهُ فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُوهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ انْقَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا don't look, don't find wahan in yourself, weakness, O Muslims. And don't feel depressed and distressed. وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ You are the upper. You are the super, super, supreme. The greatest and you're the noble. 
in kuntum mu'minin, but it's this characteristics of iman is truly in you, then you guys are the upper hand. Don't worry. Don't be scared. Don't be stressed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ If pain has touched you today, and you feel, you feel weak, and you can't even establish your religion, فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُ The battle of Badr, pain touched them as well. You guys are suffering Uhud, 70 of your companions has been killed, 70 of theirs was killed, and 70 of them you took them as hostages. 70 of the companions were killed in Uhud. But remember, 70 of them you killed in Badr. And you took 70 of theirs as hostages. The days we are swapping it between you guys. The reason why Allah is doing that, swapping the days, is to know who's truly a believer. Who's true, who's true about his Iman. And also, And to bring out of you guys, martyrs. And you know the derajah for a martyr. And Allah doesn't like the transgressors, the oppressors. وَلِيُمَحِّصَ Allah also wants to cleanse and clean الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The believers. And Allah wants to what? وَيَمْحَقَ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah wants to destroy and nullify and destroy the disbelievers. أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ Allah says to the Sahabas and the believers, Did you think to yourselves, أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ تَأَنْتَ جَنَّةً وَلَمَّا يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't made it clear the one who is fighting in his cause. وَيَعْلَمَ الصَّابِرِينَ And the one who is sincere in his patience. And then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ You guys were before. وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمُوتِ Here, you guys used to claim that you were waiting for jihad. You wanted to fight. You said you were looking forward to this. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَن تَلْقَوْهُ Before you met the, the enemies, you were hoping for death. فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُوهُ here, here it is. You're looking at it in the eyes now. وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ نَبِي اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدٌ isn't إِلَّا رَسُولٌ except a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Messengers came before him. Nabi Allah Muhammad, he's no but nothing except a messenger like the previous messengers. Okay? Messengers came before him. أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ If he dies, أَوْ قُتِلَ Or he is killed. إِنْ قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ Are you guys going to turn on your heels? Meaning apostate. وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ Anyone who turns on his heels. عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْءٍ And he's not going to harm Allah. وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And Allah is going to fare in a fair way. He is going to reward the ones who show gratitude. So inshaAllah Ta'ala, we're going to conclude with that amount for today. Inshallah Ta'ala, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.